Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Grittiest Takes. We're coming here to hear, coming here to you Monday night after a tough four to nothing Flyers loss to the New York Islanders in Game One of the second round of the 2020 NHL playoffs. Uh, obviously, we're never ever doing good after losses, but Joe, how how you feeling? Uh, <laughs> during the second period, I was feeling good. <laughs> uh, other than that, not too fantastic. Um, this game did not go the way we liked at all. Uh, and you have to play like you played that second period because that was our brand. Of, other than not getting in front of the net still entirely enough, that was our brand of hockey. We were shooting still. We got shots on net. It's just this team's their best when they crowd the goaltender in front of the net and get some deflections too. And we still shot a good amount of slot shots or tried to center and get those tip-ins when you center the puck and, the, and you reach out to tip it in, I still think you need to establish more just stand in front of the net, just blow it from, like, blast it uh, from the point, and then have a guy deflect it and uh, put it by the goaltender. I think that's what the Flyers have to do more, and I think we'll see that more next game because it kind of annoyed me that we didn't see it this game other than for parts of the second period. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, we we touched on it after the Flyers sealed the deal against the Canadians and everything, and then obviously in the preview, uh, you and Steele did. Uh, I think uh, we all know that the Flyers didn't play the best hockey in that in that Canadian series, and obviously you come out here, and, and I don't know about you, I felt like they started a little sluggish today. They didn't seem to have that speed we're used to seeing. I understand Islanders are, are a fast team. And that's that's fine. It just didn't seem like the Flyers were playing their like even close to their usual speed. Did you did you feel that same way? In it was a little sluggish of a start. Or do you think the Islanders just got off to that much better of a start? And I'm not trying to take anything away from them. I just thought it was a mix mix of things there rather than just the Islanders getting off to that good of a start. Yeah, I think the Flyers got off to a very bad start. I mean, Giroux, even like I said before the podcast. I mean. Obviously, it's stating the obvious, but he's the captain, so you're supposed to do that at times. But he said the first period we had was the worst one we had in the bubble. We have to play better, and that's pretty – I mean, that was just a period they got thrashed. They had the time of possession by a large margin, and, I mean, that was not a fun period to watch at all for us, obviously, to start – a series, and especially when you have Andy Green turning back the clock on you. Uh, and scoring a goal there. So, uh, that's yeah. the first time he scored in the playoffs since he was 27. He's now 37. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, that's that, that happens. But, um, yeah, this was – it wasn't a good start at all. You need to be a lot better. You can't get out shot 15 to 4 and barely have any time of possession in the first period. That's not going to get you anywhere. No, I agree, I agree completely. But uh, on that, just you, you always want to get off the fast start, and that's what they were unable to do today. But Carter Hart, to his credit, I, I know when you look on paper, four goals seems like a good amount there by a team. But some of the saves Carter Hart made were just phenomenal, and and he really kept you into the ga- in the game at the end of that first period. Um, like you said, fifteen shots there, which they were they were but more, they were pretty good fifteen shots. They weren't just like some cheap shots. They were. There were some pretty solid ones, and he made a couple really good glove saves. Uh, but but after you, you mentioned it, you get off that slow start, you're down 15-4 to 4 in shots going into the second period, and, and it was 1-0, uh, and the most important thing in the score. And the second period, you get off to such a fast start. You, you saw the speed back. You just couldn't buy anything, uh, buy anything to get past the, their goaltender, and you obviously kept shooting and shooting and struggling over and over and you could kind of see the frustration build from a lot of these Flyers players uh probably about I mean they showed up pretty early but really once uh the the second period we got going I think uh I think that kind of played a factor into the way the Flyers kept going so how do you think the frustration of the Flyers that built throughout the game kind of overtook some of their uh, actual play style in this one yeah, it probably did because, uh, like Giroux said uh, after the game, uh, you can't have frustration. He said frustration is something we can't have. We don't plan on losing the next one. Um, it just shows to the other team that they kind of got you beat already. When you show frustration, it kind of shows that you're almost admitting defeat at that point. So you can't show that on the ice. And I know um, Charlie O'Connor um, – 
had a tweet too that was AV said you um, frustration is not going to help. You got to focus on the task. So I mean, even if you're not other than Jake Voracek and Michael Roffel and somewhat Fairby being consistent as forwards uh, a lot on the team, you still got to show that you're fighting and you're not getting frustrated because that just wears on other people in a negative way. And it also, like Giroux and AV got on, doesn't help anything. Uh, showing frustration never helps anything. It, so that something I think they're pushing on from. We have to remember the Flyers haven't lost back-to-back games since January. So that's a good sign, uh, at least. So. But yeah, without question, and that, that's a reason to build confidence into the next game. Um, I know I saw some stuff on Twitter. Uh, after after you go into the Islanders score their second and third goals in the game, obviously you're almost sitting desperation point at that time. You saw AV pull Hart early in this one with eight minutes left. Did you see any issue with that at all? Some I saw some people on Twitter, not a lot, but some people kind of get a little disappointed by that because they thought it was a little too early there. Uh, and then that fourth goal essentially sealed it on the empty netter. Did you have any issue with the goalie being pulled there uh, with in that scenario? I think he did it because we had a great second. Our start of the third was solid until they scored their second goal. Then we had a couple shifts before they scored their third goal. Then after their third goal, we just had nothing. So I think he kind of did it. It was a last-ditch effort because the Islanders in the last 10 minutes are one of the best teams at closing you out. Once you're... Once they're ahead by a few goals, normally you're done. So you kind of have to give yourself a good amount of time to get three goals if you're going to reasonably get three goals against the Islanders because once they're up by goals, they're a great team at just sealing it down. So I was fine with it. I think it was one of those things. It actually shows as a head coach you're still showing faith in your team and showing them, hey, uh, even though we didn't play the best game, I'm going to give us the last final chance here. And then, of course, you have a fluky goal that Taze, I think it was Devin Taze that scored on that, uh, did not mean to do it all where you saw him react afterwards to his bench and he was kind of like, oh, yeah, that happens. Okay, cool. Uh, Like, you could tell he did no inclination of doing that. And most people don't on bank shots. It was Shea Weber from the uh, first round all over again, not against us, but the round against Pittsburgh. So that just happened. Obviously, Hart... um, he really only allowed three goals because, I mean, an empty net goal is an empty net goal. That's not against the goaltender, obviously. So, and a couple of them, I mean, he wasn't saving. I mean, Anders Lee, nobody picked him up. And Gene Gabriel Paggio, nobody picked him up. So, I mean, those were just plays. The only one he might have had a chance on, but Myers kind of blocked him on it, was against... Um, the Andy Green shot, I would say. Man, I, I agree with that. I think, uh, like I mentioned, the score could be a little misleading in that sense just because of the way some things are played out. Um, I know, obviously, there's a lot of areas you struggled on. Uh, I don't know what you thought uh, the biggest part of the game they were lacking tonight. I thought outside of that slow start, I, I thought they never kind of gained – uh, first off, any momentum, but second off, I never thought they had the best puck control tonight, and I thought that was an issue you saw last series, and it uh, seems a little worrisome that carries over tonight. So I'd say that was my biggest issue is the lack of puck control at times. I don't know about you, but what would you say your overall biggest issue with the performance of the Flyers tonight? Yeah, in the second, they did not have a lot of puck control, but uh, quick question, is your, is your screen frozen right now, or is that just mine? No, you're you're frozen too on mine. I just I could still hear you, so I thought I'd keep going. Okay. Um, <laughs> I take it I'm frozen as well. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's some technical difficulty. Hopefully it saves, and then people will just think it's funny. Something uh, something to laugh about. Crappy game. But uh, but uh, go nag, go nag. We'll go back on the ice for the four-check. So I'll say that in the positive. Uh, he was buzzing around the ice. Uh, so was Jake, who's looked good the whole playoffs. Really, is the and then Raffle in his handful of games, he hasn't been in the whole playoffs, but he's looked good in uh, the handful of games he's been in. Uh, due to injury, uh, he wasn't in the whole time. 
I mean, yeah, they need to do something. I think they need to shake up the lines, obviously. And I think originally I wasn't really with Yarif and Jamie because I don't think his 200-foot game is good enough for the playoffs. But the Flyers are lacking so much on offense. They might honestly just have to put Frost in. I mean, he's going to give you offense. I don't know how good he's going to look on the other end. So you're going to want to get him the right matchups with their opposing lines and you can do that in game two obviously because you have less change in game three you couldn't uh so i would say i'm more leaning towards maybe being in favor of that because our offense has been so bleak uh you can put frost on one of your power plays as well set him up for one timers um you got to do something to start getting the offense going it hasn't been good uh most of the postseason since we got into the actual postseason it really hasn't been good we've just been winning games more um pounding and grinding through it or defensively so i would say maybe you just have to put him in and then obviously you're going to keep knacking and then one of the guys that's going to come out is going to be thompson or grant i would think yeah I, that's a, that was actually one of my following questions was um what kind of line changes would you make? We already seen AV make a ton of them uh, throughout the playoffs, so you kind of already answered that one. Uh, I think uh, I mentioned it before. I think, and, and I was I'm a fan. Of, I like Nate Thompson's overall play, but I feel like he's struggling really bad these first two series uh, so far. So I wouldn't be surprised if they kind of make a move for him. Yeah, it's also I, Grant struggling really bad too. So it's kind of like take your. <laughs> take your bad pick. <laughs> Matt, take your, take your pick. Because Thompson had like two good games against Montreal. Grant has had one good game the whole playoff. So it's kind of like, okay, one better game than the other guy. Uh, and then one okay game compared to the other guy having one okay game and one good game. I was like, okay, what do I do here? Um, but I would say one of them will probably stay in by default. But I think for um, forced. Frost, who hopefully is a force, um, <laughs> needs to get put in and uh, need to add to the offense. I agree with those two now, Jamie and Yarif, on that because, I mean, this offense has been so bleak. You got to do something for that. And, I mean, the kid we know is a great player and a great blooming player. It's just he might not be the best defensive player yet, but if he gets his confidence going, you're going to put him in. I mean, if he gets it going in the playoffs, usually that fuels you, and I'm sure he'll look solid on the other end if his confidence juices start flowing when he gets put in. So... I would look for that to happen. I would look for Knack to continue to be a boss. Um, that's just who he is, you know. <laughs> Die right there. Um, Ghost actually uh, did not play other than that one turnover he had. Uh, didn't uh, He had a couple giveaways, but I think that was honestly because I don't like that pairing. I don't think he's comfortable at all with Braun and a bunch of people I saw people tweeting that beforehand about like oh ghost and Braun again I don't think that reaction at least for most people is because of ghost I think it's because the pairing with Braun makes no sense Braun's so slow like he's a good defenseman but he's not quick and ghost when now that his knees are back actually wants to move more like he normally used to so pairing him with Braun is just doesn't make sense so like that's why I was surprised. If you want to pair him with anyone that's slower, it should be Hag, because at least Hag's younger and has bigger strides than Braun, so he covers a little bit more ground. And Hag's also naturally going to say, Ghost, you do your thing. I'm just going to stay the hell back. So, like, that's why if you want to do that, you could do that, or you could move, shuffle some guys around on the defensive line. I mean, I think I agree with your reef on this thing, too. I think. Provorov and Sant, not Sant, Provorov and Myers is the future top line because that's lefty righty. Then you would have Sandheim and Niski because that's lefty righty. That would work. And then your bottom would just have to be lefty lefty unless it bronze in, uh, who who um kind of has looked okay but has also been off. And since your offense is off, I would say you might have to keep Ghost in. And put Hag in, because I was shocked that Hag wasn't in for this series, because uh, Pirlo said it in the video this morning. The Islanders are a team that clears the puck in. They try to go through you on offense and just intimidate you, kind of like they did tonight other than in the second period. Robert Hag's a perfect defenseman to have in to stop that, so that was a big shock to me that he wasn't in. But 
it is what it is. I see adjustments coming next game, obviously, and I trust AV to make the right adjustments. There's a reason why we haven't lost back-to-back games since January. One's obviously the players and their bounce back, and two is the coaching staff and the adjustments they make to bounce back. So, yeah, no, I hear you. Um, so uh, you mentioned who you'd have Gostasper pair with. So who would you have Braun pair with then if you're going to take him away from uh, Gostasper? Well, he wouldn't be in in that lineup. <laughs> like, okay. so you, you take him out fully? That's what, that's what I was asking. Yeah, he would be the guy I think I would give a day or two to kind of figure it out to. Because by default, he's also going to be the guy that's least likely on the team next year because of cap restraints and all that. You're not going to re-give Ron $3 million when we don't have a load of cap space to begin with. So if you uh, sub him out and those lines really start working, unless if there's an injury, it might honestly be – I appreciate everything Justin Braun did, honestly. I like what he did this year for us with blocking shots and stuff. But if he gets subbed out and everything starts working, unless if there's an injury, that might be the last game. Because uh, I, I don't think he's coming back due to the cap staying the same. So that's a uh, that would be a kind of a shame because of how good he kind of did through us throughout. But, I mean, I think you have to base things off of the playoffs. And Ghost did have four giveaways today, but I didn't like the – pairing and some of those giveaways are also when you're behind the net and then you try to clear it up the boards like I don't know why we were playing like that so much um you can't do that against the Islanders you have to play more um planned like passes and not actually just keep clearing it up the boards and all that good stuff because that's not good against the Islanders some team that is really good stuff because they're not good at checking along the boards and all that the Islanders are one of the best teams at doing that so that don't really work so they need to adjust. I think they will. And we'll come out strong next game. And Hart will have another good game because, yeah, he gave up three goals because one was an empty net. Um, none of them other than maybe one really he could have done anything about because two were missed coverages. And the other was Sanheim – or not Sanheim, Myers kind of blocked Carter Hart in front of the net. Uh, I mean – and you could tell from his frustration afterwards. I'm sure everyone knows what I'm talking about. So um, that's uh, that's why I think Hart will bounce right back as he did in the first round. And I still think we'll be good in game two because this is the first game we actually showed a very good period. The problem is the other two were awful. Um, so obviously, if that don't happen, you're going to win uh, most likely. Like If you play... Most of the game, like you played the second period and only have an off seven minutes, you're probably going to be able to win against the Islanders because you're going to have some time because they're too good of a team where they look good. But I think the Flyers are going to bounce back and play a very aggressive game, have lineup changes to respond to what Barry Trotz did in game one because this is going to be a battle of wits between two of the top coaches in the Game two, as well as a battle of goaltenders with Varlamov, who's the hottest I've ever seen him in his whole career, and Hart, who's obviously a great young ascending goalie. So yeah, uh, my fi- my final question for you would be: obviously, you mentioned the lineup changes, and you keep mentioning a bounce back game. Uh, so, what has to happen next game uh, outside the lineup change, the physical play of the Flyers? What needs to improve the most from game one to game two for that bounce back victory to happen Wednesday night? Well, that would be a good start, more physical play. Uh, We saw a couple hits. Uh, Knack, I saw, uh, trying to get in there. We need to see more um, bruising, like, type of hitting people against, uh, like, like, obviously, like, holding people up against the boards, the forecheck, like we saw in the second period. Like, that's what we really need to see. That second period was almost picture perfect. And the best period we played, like, the first was the worst uh, since coming in the bubble. So that's why this game was an enigma because normally you don't have two absolutely asinine periods and then have one in the middle that's just great and everything's amazing and you're looking the best you looked in the playoffs um so that's what you really need to see all the great forechecking the better play the only thing i would change from the second is we shot a little bit too much from the outside still I want to see more guys in front of the net because the one thing Semyon Varlamov has never been consistent at doing in his career has been seeing around guys as a average size goaltender, like guys like Quick early in his career, small guys, Miller obviously in his prime could do it. Uh, 
Varley's never been the best guy at finding that mini lane to see the puck. And we didn't have enough shots like that except for a couple in the second, but it was more not as good of crowding in front of the net like I saw from us at our peak in the regular season, other than maybe three or so shifts. So I would like to see that a lot more, and I think that's how you beat this Islanders team, more physical, aggressive, forechecking play, playing more in front of the net, uh, with JVR in, telling him to park his behind in front of the net. And uh, then I think that would help, and you would be doing better. Because the only way you're able to shoot from the outside is um, if one G starts getting going more, Jake just continue, just says, okay, I'm just shooting, uh, since he's been our most consistent player. And third, which is not happening this round, uh, Limblom comes back since he's your best shooter from the outside. So that's not happening this round, I don't think. It is. <laughs> so the Flyers just need to figure something out and play more of their game. The second period plus more in front of the net tenacity. And I think we got game two. I, I liked our second period. I think that's what we're built off of. And that's what everybody will look at as the adjustments that needs to be made other than also adding on top of it higher graded net front presence. No, I, I agree completely, and I think it's very possible that happens, and I expect a bounce-back victory. As you mentioned, Flyers have not la- lost back-to-back games since January, uh, so obviously a very long time. Obviously not the start we wanted to the series, but obviously uh, plenty of time to come back here in these next uh, few days. Uh, next game will be Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Flyers and Islanders go back at it as the Flyers will look to even the series. Um if you like our channel, like our work, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And uh, as always, please um, comment, give us any questions you have with this Flyers team and, and what we can answer for uh, for you next time after the game or anything else you want us to talk about here. Uh, Joe, what are your final thoughts here? Well, one is uh, let us know how funny you thought the whole video thing was that we froze <laughs> partially through. Uh, another is just, I don't really, I've kind of said what my final thought would have been. I see Carter O'Hart, uh, playing another good game. I don't think he really played a bad game as I've already said, uh, in this game, but I see him playing really good in the next game. I mean, I think my one final thought would be maybe something I thought of during the game. The Flyers, for some reason, played that first period like we were the Arizona Coyotes. Like that literally reminded me of watching the Coyotes. It was like, okay, Carter, you got this. Where, like, that's exactly what they do with Darcy Kemper until sometimes they figure it out. Where the Flyers are obviously a much better team than the Coyotes, and they figured it out immensely in the second period, which the Coyotes had one game they did that the whole playoffs. Uh, But to have to a full extent. So that... um. That's kind of what you didn't like. That's why I agree with G. That was by far, or NAV, that was by far the worst period uh, in the bubble because you don't want to be compared to the Arizona Coyotes. They're that's, a good I was going to say, that is not a team, team yeah, you want That's not the best with. comparison. Yeah. They're a building team. That's the key word. You don't want to be compared to a building team when you're a top contender. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree. Um, hopefully, again, we'll be talking about. On Wednesday, uh, in our recap, hopefully we're talking about a solid Flyers comeback, come from or not come from behind, but just a solid uh, Wednesday uh, comeback that victory. Works too. Yeah, it works. <laughs> uh, comeback victory Wednesday afternoon to even up the series at one. Uh, obviously, the rest of the series, just so people know, this week it will be Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday are the games. Yes, back to back between game two and three. So look forward to talking about that one. As always, thanks for listening to this episode of Grittiest Takes. For Joe and Andrew, have a great night. Uh, Hopefully Wednesday we talk about that victory. Peace out.